It's Kyle, and today we're looking at what might be one of the coolest pieces of hardware and one of the most best built uh, pieces of engineering I've seen as a GoPro accessory for, well, the entire time I've been doing this. So this is the Galileo from Motor, and it's a multi-axis motorized tripod head rotating time-lapse base thing for your camera. So we'll take a really brief tour of the unit and then we'll talk about how it works. So this is the unit itself and it's got two motors on it here. So one of them rotates this base piece like that and the other one rotates the second base here and it works with a phone in either a portrait mode like this or landscape mode. So basically if you're using the GoPro camera you use the portrait mode like this for um, storage and then when you want to actually use it you just spin it. So you just push it on the side here and spin it up into landscape mode. Now is this cutout in here is designed to be used with a uh, iPhone but if you want to use it with a GoPro camera all you have to do is use the GoPro adapter and this is a frame for your GoPro camera which works with the uh, GoPro Hero 3, Hero 3 Plus, Hero 4s, works with all of those and basically you just slide in your GoPro camera into it like this and I do have to stop here and talk about this frame because this is one of the most well-engineered frames for your GoPro camera I think I've ever seen. It is designed to only work with the Galileo, but the frame itself has some really, really cool features. So we've all seen the normal cutouts for the USB charging port, the microphone, and the button ports, but it's also got this little latch here on the top, which is designed to work with a charging USB cable. So if you run a USB cable from the port here, you run along the top and inside this little cutout and that keeps the USB cable out of the way of the lens so it makes sure that if you're shooting a time lapse with external power that a USB charging cable is never going to be in front of the lens of your camera. Then because when you're going to jam this into the Galileo the uh, Wi-Fi button is going to be pressed up against the inside of it you're going to have to be able to press that Wi-Fi button. So they've actually installed this little clicker here this button that's a little lever that accesses the uh, Wi-Fi button there so you can hit this and it'll turn the Wi-Fi on and off. To install this with the Galileo, all you do is take your camera and jam it into the holder here, just like this. And the soft touch finish on the frame, as well as the rubber in the base of the Galileo, make a super secure mount that you really never are going to have to worry about coming out. And just like that, the thing is mounted. The Galileo itself, uh, on the top, we talked about the two motors and that little base piece. Now it does come with different base pieces, so each one of those can be used with different cameras depending on what uh, or with different phones, depending on what phone you're using, you can pull out these base pieces. Uh, and then on the bottom of it here, we've got a nice rubber grip around the bottom of the base so it doesn't move around on whatever surface you've got, as well as a quarter by 20 inch threaded hole if you want a tripod mount it, and then a little USB, or a, sorry, a LED indicator here on the battery for battery life, so when you turn it, it will tell you what the battery life is, as well as a micro USB charging port on the back to charge the battery which powers this. You can also run external power to this and continue to use the Galileo if you want to really use it for a long, long period of time. So that's the Galileo, that's a piece of hardware and it's an amazing piece of hardware. It feels incredibly solid, the build quality of it is amazing and it's a super, super cool mount. Now, let's get into controlling it. So it's all controlled via an app. So it's an as of right now, it's only an iOS app, so I've got an iPad here in order to control it. And what we have to do is we launch the uh, motor app, and then we're told to connect our Galileo. And it's really, really simple to connect. You just take your Galileo, and you turn it, and it says it's connecting, and then it connects, and that's it. That's all you need to do for connecting. Now, we can just run this test here, because it does a bunch of cool stuff. And that's how it works. So you can see we've got two axes of control. We've got the, the pitch as well as the roll. So we got pan and tilt. And that's the Galileo. So there are two ways in which you can actually control your Galileo. And the first one of those is using the joystick. So using the joystick, you can just touch down and drag it around to control where the camera's pointing and then whether or not it's, um, yeah, where it's pointing. So this is great for setup or if you want to kind of get panning shots, say you're using the GoPro app to live monitor, you could use this to get some panning shots of what's going on. Then there's a second way which is kind of a little bit more useful because this is actually what you can use to shoot time lapses. So this is the D-pad and with this you can hit directions you want the camera to go 
It will actually save those directions and continue turning in them. So we can push one or two directions here, and then we can set the, um, the speed down here accordingly. So if you really want to slow this down to shoot long time lapses, you can do that. There's a little bit of a drawback here, though, because as soon as I lock this iPad, there's the lock button on one of these things, it's going to stop moving. So as soon as this disconnects from the Galileo, all of that movement stops, which is a bit of a problem because, well, if you're going to shoot a four-hour time lapse, it means the screen of your iPad or your iPhone needs to be on for all of that time, and it can't do anything else. So there's no way to right now to actually send those commands, those direction commands to the Galileo and let it operate uh, kind of independently. You have to do everything with the app loaded. This is cool, and it could get cooler. There's actually a second app available which allows you to program in time ramping and speed ramping as well as patterns so it could go up through a time lapse and then back down and all these kinds of things, but there's a big drawback. And it's kind of my biggest problem with this entire concept. Well, the hardware is amazing and I'm in love with this piece of engineering. It's amazing and it's just really well put together and it's, just, it's, it's awesome. My problem is with the apps and how they're implementing it. Basically, if you want to be able to have this programmable functionality of how your time lapse goes together, you need to spend $10 on a different app. And in fact, the app you get from the, the, the motor app that controls the Galileo, the very first thing it does when it opens is tell you about all the other apps you can buy in order to get the full functionality out of your Galileo. There's things from face tracking, if you're using an iPhone with it, to video calling, and again, face tracking in that, and you can do panoramas with it. This is if you have an iPhone in it, but for photography, um, there's so many, and here's this one. So it, again, yes, this is $10, and this one allows you to put in um, kind of pre-programmed curves for where your uh, time lapse is going to go. And this is what you need in order to fully kind of unleash the potential of this piece of hardware. So it's really disappointing to me that when, when a consumer is... When a consumer spends this much on a piece of hardware that they're expecting to have all these great features and would seem like it could have all these amazing, this amazing potential, to then ask them to spend an extra $10 on an app to just get some of that potential seems to be a bit wrong to me. I wish that if this is something it can do and if we can program it, we should be able to program it in the free app that they're giving us with the Galileo. I think being able to program at least where we want the time-lapse to go and then maybe being able to lock the iPad so we don't have to worry about it um, being on the whole time and maybe running out of battery. All these kinds of things would be really great to see implemented. So the conclusion comes out like this and you can see this sample video running right now. It does shoot amazing video time-lapses. It's great for that if you do panning with it, shooting real video. It's super smooth so it's an amazing piece of hardware but this is the conclusion, and it's really sad. It's an amazing, amazing piece of hardware which is being let down by a subpar app. And the good part about that is it's really easy to fix. They just need to improve the app. The hardware already exists, and they just need to get the app sorted out in a way that has all the functionality we would expect that, and that this piece of hardware can obviously deliver. So if we get that functionality into the free app, this is going to be absolutely amazing. And I like I can't stress enough that this hardware and this thing is super, super great and really cool. I was just a little bit disappointed with the app and my experience using it wasn't really that great. So great hardware, not such a great app. And that was the Galileo from Motor. Guys, this was another GoPro tips and tricks video. If you've enjoyed it, Please make sure you like the video, subscribe, and check out my channel for tons more videos. If you've got any questions or comments about the video, leave them down below. I read all of those and respond to as many of them as I can. Until next time, guys, thanks very, very much for watching.